Welcome to my appointment and East Ellery. So thank you very much. So um, um, our guest tonight is a badass, right? If you know him, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, know. I mean, I have a bio here, and I'm going to read some of it. But basically, um, two things, right? Drag and Tupperware. That's it. Quintero. <laughs> so let me just read a little bit about him. So Oscar was born in Hacienda Heights, right? Suburb outside of Los Angeles. Who doesn't know Hacienda Heights? It's like where, um, uh, I won't get, you get into that, right? <laughs> it's like where people from East LA go, you know, I don't know, that's what my family did, you know. <laughs> if you migrate east to get out of the hood, anyway. Um, um, Oscar knew in order for him to be heard, he would have to speak up. And that he did in the sixth grade when he was cast as a lead in the Glenalder? Glenalder, yeah. Elementary school play Christmas Fever, where he caught the acting bug. From then on, he looked for ways to be in front of the crowd taking a few acting classes in college. It was in 1999 that Oscar got his big break as he met his alter ego, Kay Sadia. Can we get a picture of that? <laughs> Kay Sadia, when he auditioned for a drag pageant fundraiser called Quest for the Crown. Right? <laughs> Being named the runner-up was the best outcome that could have happened for Oscar as he became a crowd favorite. That's where Oscar met Mr. Dan, correct? Yep. The owner of Drag Strip 66 and the Plush Slide. They began to collaborate and perform together for the next seven years. It was performing in the plush life um, that Oscar realized and developed his sense of comedic timing. It was through this show that Oscar met Kurt Kohler and thus began another great collaborating relationship. While writing Super Fag, a short film about a gay Superman, Kurt <laughs> added a part for Quesadilla as her alter ego. Right? So one year later, in the summer of 2003, the two began to collaborate on what was to become a big underground hit in Silver Lake, California, 
Chico's Angels. Who's been to a Chico's Angels show? Yeah. <laughs> they just, we just saw them like a week ago, right, from Mother's Day. Um, they have four original stage shows, Pretty Chicas All in a Row, Love Boat Chicas, Chicas in Chains, and Chicas Are Forever. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a show coming up, right, in, before I forget, right, July 18th? Through August 4th. Through August, yeah. right? So it's the original episode, Pretty Chicas All in a Row. 10 year anniversary, yeah. right? Wow. So go to Quesadilla's website or chicosangels.com and you can get your tickets through there. So do it, because they sell out. They really, they sell out fast. <laughs> Don't wait too long, I'm serious. Um, and here's the other part of Oscar's life, right? In 2001, he went to a Tupperware party hosted by a woman with a guitar. Is that right? Yep. He got inspired and said, I could do this. Looks easy. And before you knew it, he was the number one Tupperware sales diva in all of North America. <laughs> <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, we are honored and excited to present Oscar Quintero to my appointment. Yeah. Alright, so let's get started, right? So, Oscar, I was reading your bio and it's still a little bit of a mystery because all you tell us is that you're from Hacienda Heights. Yes. But, fill in that other gap, how did your family get to Los Angeles, to Hacienda Heights? You know, tell us your story of how your family ends up here. Well, I'm the youngest of six kids. My parents had the first five, and they had me ten years later. Both my parents came here from, from Mexico, and my dad broke here on a train, on top of a train when he was uh, 14. And uh, it's funny, because we, we just lost my dad last year, and uh, it's, it's so amazing how I, I kind of, it all broke, it all came full circle for me of the opportunities that I, that I have, just based on that train trip he took. And, uh, so my dad came here when uh, he was 14, and then he met my mother. They met in Tijuana, which is uh, where three of my siblings were born. Uh, my parents got married there, and then once my father got his green card, he moved my mother over, because he lived here illegally for quite a few years. And then uh, he brought her over, and uh, they had actually, yeah, brought her over, and then they had three more of us here. And like I said, I was born 10 years after the first five. And uh, it's funny because I love my brothers and sisters, but I, I never felt like I was, I never felt like I was, uh, they were my siblings. I always felt like I had a bunch of parents. Because <laughs> um, I, I had to obey everybody. But, um, but yeah, and then my father was a trash, was a trash truck driver. Um, and my mother was a, was a homekeeper. They lived in the projects here in East LA. And then my father was finally able to afford to buy a home and they moved east to, Hacienda Heights, and I was born, and my mother is still in the house that I was born in. So, but I was actually born here in General Hospital. And, uh, but uh, yeah, she's still in the house that I was raised in. So that's how I live in Hacienda Heights, and it's, it's, it's funny, because there's, uh, we're literally up on a hillside, Hacienda Heights, and then it goes down, and then it's the 60 freeway. Our backyard was the 60 freeway. So it was like, it was, it was weird, because everybody up on the hill pretty much had money. And everybody down at the bottom did it. So for some reason, I just I knew that we were poor, or poor-ish, but we had everything we needed. But uh, uh, it, it, it's funny to me that I, I always attributed to being poor to being Mexican. And uh, it um, I, again, I can look back now and, and just be grateful for the opportunities my parents presented to us because. It, it's not how I felt back then. I just most of my work reflects everything that I was ashamed of as a kid, and it just—it's almost my way of celebrating and making light of what I thought was wrong with me or with yeah. us. And um, so, yeah. so that's how it lights. Me and Fergie from Dark Eyed Peas. So, so after, um, one of the things we you mentioned that we wanted to talk about today was was comedy. Yeah. Because when we first saw you, I mean, the, the company is brilliant. We think, we've seen a lot of theater. We used to be a theater company for 10 years. We've seen a lot of theater. Uh, and the, the company is just brilliant. Yeah. So we're really curious about where that bone comes from. So, But can we show a short clip sure. first? So people maybe grab the scene and get a little taste. Sure. So do we do the, let's do the Chico's Angels one. What's your fingers, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> oh, P.S. We're live. We are live streaming. Oh, we are live Ha, ha, ha. 
the other women that were playing the contestants and were like really beautiful women that were like wearing G-string bikinis and something you would see like on uh, Sabado Gigante, you know, these <laughs> bouncing around. And, uh, you know, it was clear that, you know, myself and the other, uh, the one that plays Cheetah Pro stood out. So the whole idea just literally became about fish out of water, which is pretty much how I, I grew up feeling. And, um, you know, and, that, and then everything that we've written since, um, it, it's funny because I, like I said, I'm not a writer in that I, I can't shape a story. I just have ideas. And he, my writing partner, uh, was able to kind of shape the story and I would just, okay, have her say this. Okay, let's do this. Because I've tried writing, I've tried writing on my own and I just, I have a hard time. Mostly just to sit down and, the hardest thing for me is to sit down and actually start writing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how Kurt and I uh, developed. Uh, but but like the funny bone you have like because everyone has seen you live. Yeah. One of the best parts is how you interact with the audience, like the ad libbing, yeah. and you know the, just that stuff that happens. Like like what do you think that comes from? Like like is one of your parents the funny one? Or you know what I'm saying? Like no. well, where do you think that ability to like ad lib and, <coughs> and just be funny comes from? You know I it's funny because there's. There's, there were no arts in our family whatsoever. My dad was, like I said, a, a trash truck driver. My mother was a homemaker. And then, you know, uh, my mother was an alcoholic, actually. And there was a lot of, I feel like my comedy just comes from pain. You know, just, it's just this, this, um, this kind of warped way that I look at the world is where, it's, where it comes from. Because I, I, I couldn't tell you exactly what it is other than, um, you know, I, I never studied for this. It's just one of those things that just happened over time. And I gotta say, the Tupperware, um, I'm literally in front of an audience, a new audience every single night, and uh, there's so many things that just bombed in the beginning, and I quickly learned to, to make fun of the bomb, rather than just try to get myself out of it. I was like, oh, well, you know, I just can't kind of make a joke about that, oh, that didn't go over too well or something. And then over time, something just developed in where I just didn't care how silly I looked. And uh, it's one of those things where I literally give myself permission to look like an asshole in front of people. Um, <laughs> because if, if I don't, it's just like I, I, I get in my head and then I start, I start, I start floundering. And um, so I, I couldn't tell you exactly where it comes from other than it just, it comes from some weird, painful place in my life. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's, uh, I think, um, I mean, you hear that often, right? Like, the, an artist that they could take that pain, yeah. but if you're able to turn it into something, right? Yeah. Kind of beautiful in a way, or put the Well, I mean, it's, it, it, I, I couldn't tell you, like I said, I didn't set out to do anything specific, but it just, I look it back at the, you know, uh, all the work that I've done, it, it came from somewhere. It's a reflection of where, of what I thought of myself, what I thought of my culture, and what I thought of my family, especially, because most everything I do is influenced by my family. And uh, it's funny because there, there's been times where I'd be sitting at home with my family, and you know, Darren here's my partner. And you can tell you it's just loud, <laughs> loud, loud, loud. And there's times I'm just sitting there and I'm just observing my family, and my brother will stop and say, hey, "Everybody, hey, everybody, quiet." Oscar's taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be in the next show. Watch. <laughs> and we start laughing, but it's so true. It's just it's those little nuances, those little things that my mother. <laughs> Especially my mother, that she would do, um, that kind of just because quesadilla is the quesadilla is like a is a version of my mom and my aunt, you know, just this kind of uh, you know the way that quesadilla's uh, backstory is that she was a runway beauty queen in from Tijuana. <laughs> she was the biggest thing there, and she took that everywhere she went. And that my mother was like. Less. She would go to the grocery store with makeup from the night before, <laughs> hung over, she'd have like these green sweatpants, like those jelly plastic shoes, <laughs> plastic sandals, white socks and like a gold and like green sweatpants and a gold lemonade blouse, and she'd go get milk. And like, horrified. I'm like, well, my friends are gonna see her out in the public. Like, she, she could give a shit. She could she did not care. And uh you know, so it's kind of like this sassy kind of uh, uh, loud. They didn't know what they were talking about, but they, but they, you thought they did because they said it very loud, <laughs> <laughs> very aggressive. And uh, all my aunts on my mom's side are just aggressive, and they took care of them themselves. And um, so that's kind of like you know, it's this uneducated kind of uh, ignorance 
And, uh, but she thinks she knows what she's talking about. That's why most everything she says, she says wrong when she says it. She says the wrong word or something like that. And you know, it's funny because even now, like sometimes I think I know what I'm saying with, with a certain word, but I'm like, I hope this is what it means. And I say it out loud and hope no one catches it. And uh, if it's right, great, but if not, they'll quickly correct me. And then I just laugh about it. You know, I just, I, I just feel like I stopped apologizing mm -hmm. for being who I am. And it just, quesadilla really reflects a lot of that, and uh, it it definitely, um, I, I feel like it just totally opened my eyes up to, um, you know, to my shame. You know, like I said, this is where that where did this all come from, and it just it's, it it truly is like a complete celebration. Uh, is the way I look at it. You know? And going back to your family, then, how how is your family with, or when it when it, when. K first emerged or like, well, you know, I'll, I'll, how was your family with that? They they love it. They come to everything I do and <laughs> because I think they see what it what it represented. They they it, at the beginning for them too it was like, oh this is funny when they start realizing, oh my god, that's exactly what my mother does. <laughs> and they started seeing themselves, I think, in a lot of my work and they just they became my biggest fans. You know, and I gotta tell you, when I first started doing it, I I came out to my father when I was uh, twenty two and I Myself, just kind of read out, and um, I uh, I knew that if I wanted to stay clean and sober, that I needed to be honest with my dad and my mom. And I told them, and uh, first thing my dad said to me was, "I love you," and then he freaked out, and my mom just freaked out. <laughs> she, she just went crazy, and um, you know, I um, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> How? Oh, you so your dad? so I came out to my dad, and then. I started doing quesadilla probably a couple years, uh, probably five years after that, and uh, I did that pageant, which was a uh, it was a huge event. It was at the World Trade Theater. It was like three thousand people in the audience. And prior to that, the only stage experience I had was uh, high school, uh, was high school theater. And um, I was literally about to throw up before going out on stage because I was so nervous. But my dad came to that show, and. Uh, he was beside himself, and all he kept saying is, "Oh my God, that's your mom. That's your mom to my to my siblings." And then, um, and then I remember after the show, my dad was like, "Great job, you know, from a distance. He couldn't come near me." And then, uh, and then uh, I did a I did a show called The Sound of the West Side Story. Somebody combined the West Side Story and the Sound of Music, and, and it was Maria from the West Side Story taking care of the Bonjet kids. <laughs> and, uh, I, played, I played Maria, and uh, it was a funny show. When my dad came to that as well, and he got a little closer. And he says, "Good job," you know, in Spanish, because uh, my father didn't, didn't speak much English. And then Chico's Angels came into the picture, and uh, and it, it's so funny because I think for my father, a lot of it was. You know, he was afraid of what people were going to say and, and do to his son. Mm -hmm. You know, it was more that he was just scared that people were going to judge, judge me. And um, I remember the first time he came to Chico's Angels, it was that first run. The audience was just eating it up. They were laughing, and then we got a standing ovation after the show. And my father came up to me, and he, you know, after the show, and he's like, "That was so funny." And he put his arm around me, and just I had some pictures from that night. And um, you know. I think he realized how, um, how much joy people were getting from, from my work and that they weren't judging me. And it's like, it's, it's so funny because I, I think about that night often, especially after he, he passed away, just because um, I, I feel like from that point on, it's just like there was no, no more judgment, you know? It was just mostly he just, he grew to love my work. And then he came to everything I did after that. And uh, it's funny because my mom still hasn't seen anything I've done. And mostly because she doesn't speak English at all. Mm. Um, my father did speak a little bit, so he understood it. And my mom still, uh, I'm assuming she still blames herself, you know, for, for what happened. <laughs> 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 so, um, but yeah, but my family, they, they're my biggest fans. They're my biggest fans, and I just, and I, you know, and I, um, you know, I have to tell Darren that a lot of times when I, um, Oh, sorry. Um, you know, when I think of, oh, sorry, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> um, it's like I'm so excited to share with them, you know? So, oof. 
you know, because for the longest time, and you know, Darren and, and I have been together a little over a year, but for the longest time, it was like they were the first call I'd make when something new was coming. And uh, it just brought me so much joy to bring this to them. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> You've given us a lot of joy. <laughs> so, now, I'm going to keep digging in here. I'll okay, go for it. Mind. Because I, I, you mentioned something that you're recovering. Yeah. Right? And I caught the blood. Huh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but but how fascinating like then Wow, well, I mean one of my favorite shows is I'm sorry, this is retarded, it's ridiculous, but one of my favorite shows is intervention because I think it's so fascinating yeah. to see the family dynamic and the people in that you know predicament. But what do you think that did though to your like your career, your ability? Because yeah. now I realize there's no coincidence, like you said, I'm I'm able to just I'm tired of the shame, I'm tired of yeah. whatever, I'm just gonna lay it out there. Like, what role did that play in it? Well, it, it played a huge role, and I'll tell you, um, you know, I've been clean and sober for uh, over 18 years, and oh. it completely shaped my life, you know, and I think about, um, you know, I just think about, you know, you know, where my family came from, and, the, you know, the, it was, a lot of traumatic stuff happened in the beginning just because my mother was, by the time I was born, she was in full-blown alcoholism and she was violent and she was, um, she was, um, she was just angry and, um, you know, um, what did you ask me again? I'm sorry. Just the, the <laughs> what role did like the recovery have? Oh, so, know? sorry. <laughs> um, you know, I think when I, when I started falling down that path, I started doing drugs and drinking alcohol and, found myself in rehab at 21 years old, I, um, there was something about, um, there was, you know, my family, we didn't talk about how we felt in our, in our family. You know, we didn't talk about any of that, and uh, suddenly I was in recovery, and that's exactly what you do, you talk about what's, what's going on, you, you know, and it's, it was the first time in my life that I started being honest with how I felt, I started sharing with, you know, somebody shared.